Hi, uh, a very good afternoon to all our viewers. And uh, today we have a special guest with us, and he is none other than Mr. Sanjeev Kamba, uh, manager South India, Nepal, and Bhutan for Edith Cowan University um, in Perth, in Perth, Australia, that is. Hi, Sanjeev. Sanjeev, welcome to the live uh, program. Hi, thank you very much, Raju and Vikesh. Uh, uh, I think this is a great platform uh, just because. You know, uh, because of the lockdown and we can't travel and I'm sure a lot of students, you must have, we've got a lot of questions. So I think this is the best platform where we could get in touch with the students and the existing students who have applied with us already or the ones who are planning to apply with us. So everybody, my name is Sanjeev Kapa. I, uh, I represent Edith Cohen University. We are popularly known as ECU by the abbreviation. So ECU, we are based... The university is based out of Perth, Western Australia. Yeah. So, okay, uh, so uh, yeah, I'm, uh, University is quite popular here in Nepal. Well, thanks to the great work that you guys have been doing. And uh, Sanjeev, like, can you or could you share um, its popular programs as well as the locations, um, you know, in Perth? Sure. Uh, so, East is, uh, you know, we, we, are around, we are around 28 years old university. So, you know, we, uh, we've become university in the, uh, since last 28 years. And we've got a lot of uh, programs that are actually very famous all across the globe, uh, and especially in Nepal. So I'll tell you more about the programs that we have. In ECU, we have eight schools in total. So when, when I say schools, I would mean different faculties. So that includes humanities as one of the school wherein we have courses more, on, more in arts, design, psychology. And uh, we have business and law. So the business and law school would depend, would have more of business programs and laws, law programs. And we also have engineering and technology. So our engineering and technology is one of the fastest growing school in the whole of Western Australia. So we've got a lot of engineering programs at the bachelor's level and at the master's level as well. So any sort of uh, master's program looking at engineering, you could just name it and we'll have it. And we have medical and health sciences. That's one among the other schools that we have. We have nursing. Now, nursing is, a, is again very popular amongst the Nepali students. And we have all courses that, you know, from the bachelor's and even at the master's level. So, any kind of program, the, you know, the nursing program, such as the one that leads to registration and the one that does not lead to registration, we have it all. We have a science school. Uh, wherein we, uh, in the science school, we have environmental science, etc. And the most famous program in science uh, from science school would be cybersecurity. So, which is, which at this point in time, I think most of the students, you know, uh, from an IT background uh, are looking to study cybersecurity in various universities. So, we are the prime, we, we, are, the, we are the only academic center for the uh, cybersecurity success cybersecurity studies in the whole of Australia. And we have uh, teaching, we have teacher teachings, teaching as well. So anybody who's interested uh, uh, in the field of education, so they could probably, uh, you know, they could probably come with, come to us and study teaching as well. And we have WAPA, WAPA stands for Western Australia Academy of Performing Arts. So anybody who's got to do, you know, who wants to pursue music, acting. So we have the, we have the school of WAPA as well. So these are eight different schools that we have. And we have three campuses in total. So uh, our main campus is Joondalup campus, which is in Perth. And we've got a Mount Lolly campus as well. So, and we have, a, uh, we have a regional campus, which is called Bunbury, which is Southwest. Okay. Yeah, um, uh, <clears throat> good, Okay, so Sanjeev sir, uh, could you please also like let us know about uh, the basic entry requirement in ECU? Sure. So uh, now, to, before I begin, you know, I would also talk about you know uh, the college that we run, uh, the new that we have, you know, which is called Edith Cohen College. Yeah. So Edith Cohen College and Edith Cohen University. So, uh, so these are two. When the reason why I've mentioned Edith Cohen College is because we also. So we, the students, any students who, you know, can't make it to university. So we also have ECC that offers various diplomas and foundation programs, and even uh, P2P programs, which is postgraduate qualifying programs. 
So now going back to the entry requirements, our entry requirements is uh, very, very competitive. We have, you know, we, our entry requirements is not very high. So for the, uh, for, for any students who, who wants to study bachelor's with us, for an, so which I reckon is 2.65 in G scale of four. So yeah, so if anybody with this GP of 2.65 can apply for a bachelor's directly in the, in the university. Mm-hmm. And anybody who's got, so now, you know, why I've mentioned ECC, like I said, we have diplomas and foundations. So anybody who do not have the score of 2.65 or, or you know, has, has less than 2.65, they could also apply to diploma. They could also apply in ECC for diploma programs. Mm-hmm. Now, when you study diploma, that does not mean be wasting a diploma. Diploma is equivalent to the first year of bachelor. So when you complete your when you complete your diploma, you don't have to repeat the first year when you come to the university, but rather study in the second year. So the duration is you know as you, um, you know it's just as bachelor's duration. So you complete your bachelor's duration in the specified period as per the course. So for any business courses, uh, you you take three years to complete your bachelor's program, and for any engineering programs, it'll take you around four. Year, it'll take you four years to complete. So the same principle applies with the diploma as well. You do a diploma, and you complete your diploma, which is a year long, and then you complete. You come you come to the university and do your second year, third year, and fourth year. Yeah. And for the now again at the undergraduate level before i you know before i move on to masters level so even at the undergraduate level what we've seen in nepal is a lot of uh, you know the lot of courses such as you know the, what students do is they they opt for pcm you know or they even opt for ctvt programs such as a diploma in engineering mm-hmm. now what the university we do is we we understand that you have, you know, you have spent an extra year studying these programs in your home country. We do give you credits, and we do value your, we do value, value your, you know, the time that you've spent studying a diploma, which is a year longer than any other uh, plus two, plus two, you know, programs. So we give them who've done in engineering and when they come and want to pursue their engineering program further with us in the university we give you a year long credit so that actually means you come and study from second year onwards so so the you complete your bachelor's within three years now similarly this goes to the pcl students studying nursing so any nursing students who've done their pcl um, uh, pcl diploma so they could also uh, get credit from us, a credit of one year. Yeah, so you you get a, you you get graduate. You know, you become a graduate only in two years uh, if you do if you've studied PCL nursing in Nepal. So this, there are few conditions to be for PCL nursing students, such as they need to have a score of seventy five percent, which I think is not that difficult to score if you're doing PCL uh, nursing. And you need to have, you need to be a nurse in your own country, and you need to have a minimum of six months of experience. So when you have, when you meet these criteria, you, be, you know, you can come and you can, uh, you can join us in the second year of the university. And in two years, you become a registered nurse in Nepal, a registered nurse in Australia. Uh, yes. right, and, uh, so, and 2.65 is the, uh, uh, you know, the basic requirement for all the undergraduate programs. The ILTS that we're looking at uh, is six each band. So you need to have six each band uh, for majority of our undergraduate programs. Now, in case of nursing, the, the you know, the limit, uh, the ILTS requirement is a bit high. So it stands at seven each band. Okay. Okay. So now, uh, is it okay if I move on to uh, postgraduate? Uh, no. okay. okay, do you have any questions in regards to, uh, you know, the requirements for an undergraduate program? Or anybody who is, uh, who, you know, who is in the session, does if, I, if they have any questions? Anybody, any questions from the viewers? So far, we have not received any questions as such, but in the, in due course, I mean, like, uh, I'm sure, like, we'll be getting a few queries, um, 
as we move on. And yeah, we can move on to the postgraduate ones as of now, Sanjeev. Sure. So uh, postgraduate, I mean, for any postgraduate program, programs, uh, I think postgraduate programs is what we are actually, uh, you know, what a lot of students they apply for. So postgraduate students, uh, so now there are two types of students that we actually come across. So, you know, people, uh, students who've got, they are, who have three years of bachelor's or four years of bachelor's. So these are, you know, most of the students that we come across in Nepal. Now, just like, you know, like, like I said, we are very, very competitive and uh, ECU does understand the value of uh, qualification that you've started in, you know, in your home country. So even for students who have a, who have a three years bachelor, uh, so we take them into our master's directly. So there's, uh, you know, you don't have to do a bridging program unless you meet the criteria. The criteria is if you if you have a three years bachelor, so sent, then you can come and study masters with us directly. Clear? So yeah, so three years of masters, 60%, you come and study, uh, you know, three years of bachelor, you come 60%, you come and study masters with us. And uh, anybody who's got less than 60%, in their bachelor, you don't have to worry because we also have a PQP program. So PQP is a, like I was mentioning earlier, uh, we have East C College that offers PQP. PQP stands for Postgraduate Qualifying Program. So it's a semester long program wherein you would have to, um, you would have to study for four months. And once you complete the four months program, which is in Perth, not in Nepal, you have to study PQP in the, uh, in the college uh, in Perth. So once you study PQP, then you automatically can come, you know, uh, come to university after, after a semester and you can continue studying your master's program with us, okay? Now the requirement for PQP is it has to be, uh, it has, to, you know, it actually depends because, you know, some, if someone with the, if the actual requirement is 50%, uh, 50 percent in your three years bachelor, but that's again on case to case basis, and you have to meet the highest requirement of uh, requirement of six each band, all right. So, and I, like I said, it's it's a uh, it's it's on case to case basis. So, if anybody who's got a little less than 50 50 percent in their bachelor, but with a good IELTS, then that can be discussed. You have to get in touch with professional education, and we'll take that we will we'll take that further, and we could probably you know discuss on case to case basis. Now moving on. Yeah, Sanjeev, that, so yeah, yeah. Sanjeev, just want to inform our viewers that you know, like anybody like who's got three years of bachelor's degree and then wanting their further studies uh, to um, they want they wish to do their further studies in Australia. This is a good opportunity for them, isn't it? Like Sanjeev. Uh, the yes, it is. Yeah, because you know what what has happened over the past few years that we've real, we've seen it. Uh, any students have done their three years bachelor, they're slightly disappointed because you know the university, most of the university in Australia, they do not actually, you know, they do not get the recognition, and they're, they're you know, they have to study probably a, uh, you know, a graduate qualifying program or a, you, know, a, you know, a graduate diploma, which takes probably a year, long, you know, one year or more than that, some in some cases, and it's not actually. And, universities comes up and says that it's not recognized and we do not you know we do not accept the bachelor so but i think we ecu as a university we've done this for quite some time now so any viewers or anybody who would not who does not know about three years bachelor uh, you know accept accepted by university accepted by ecu so we've been doing this for over two years now more than two years in fact so and that's the reason why said you know ECU values each and everybody's qualification you know as, as long as we have your papers with us and we have a look at it so uh, you know you can come and you can study with us so this relaxation uh, you know wherein you if you if somebody with a three years bachelor uh, uh, somebody with a three, three years bachelor you don't have to actually be worried or you don't have to think about you know starting a, a start and studying a graduate diploma and then going on to masters, which actually, you know, uh, the, you, you know, it, your, your time duration to complete your masters increases. But when you come with us, like I, like I mentioned, if you have 60%, then just send us your application and send us your application and we'll make sure that you have the opulate in your hand. And if, if you have less than 60%, then of course you have to study uh, a, a, a postgraduate diploma program. But like I mentioned, it's just a, semester long, which is around, which is four months program. So you will not have to spend 
you know, a year doing a graduate diploma and then moving on to masters. So this is how you how you save time. Yeah. And the good news, Sajiv, is that you know in the IELTS requirements as well, is it like you know, supposing if uh, any student wishes to go for directly for the master's program, that normally would be six point five, no less than six. But whereas for the PQB programs, you have like only six overall, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah, that's right. So yeah, he's rightly said. You know, if you if you are if you are a student with a three years bachelor and your the English requirement requirement with us is only six each band, six each band, and and six each band is something which I've seen most of the Nepali students can easily get because you know Nepali students have good communication and there has been no communication. I mean, there has been no problem with their English as well. So IL six is something which is very easy to meet. And which most of the students that we come across have, you know, they are they always meet. Yeah. Now, whereas when we when you go to a four years bachelor, so our entry requirements are fifty percent. No worries. Our entry requirement is at fifty percent. Now, fifty percent. So fifty percent would act, and then the IS that we're looking at is slightly higher. So, which is six point five when less than six. Mm, okay. So right now, and that's again, say, like I said. Sorry. No, no worries, carry it. Yeah, like I said, uh, you know, it depends, the IS depends upon the, the school a uh, student wants to join. So, for instance, in our nursing program and PUFA programs, we have a very good entry in, in terms of ILTS. So they have to have a maintain, they have to maintain the score as per the school requires. So when I say school requires, like in the case of nursing, it stands at seven each band. So you have to study master's in nursing, you have to have a score of seven each band. Yes. And we will get into you know, we'll get into IS score in, you know, probably when we discuss about courses, because you know it's pretty vast. And when I say 6.5 is the uh, predominantly the IS most of the uh, schools would accept. Mm. But you will, you know, if you have any case in uh, if if you have any course in specific, like any viewers, if you have any course in specific. You let us know, and I will be able to give you the exact uh, ILTS requirement as well. Okay. Uh, so in terms, uh, uh, yeah. Sanjay, uh, because, can I just like interrupt? Yeah. Okay. Because like my question to you is rather than to Sanjeev, uh, what are your experiences with the PQP leading to the master's program? Like you must have the Kamraka students, and then you must have successfully like recruited students at ECU for those students. Like, can you share your experiences? Because um, you know, so that our viewers are well aware about. You know how the how it goes. So I'll how the process goes first. Uh, yeah, I'll start first because I think I, I've seen you know P, uh, I've I, I think we were the ones who introduced you know we had introduced uh, PQ you did. in the year uh, that was in the year 2015, 14 or 15. So I think it was late 14 or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, because I uh, you know it was 2014 or 15 when we had launched. PQP, and you know, I still remember because students had no idea what to do with their three years bachelor. You know, we had launched, and when they got to know, we had a huge number of students, students applying for PQP programs, and you know, what we had seen is uh, the only, you know, the, the only limit limit to this program is uh, you should not have three offers. For instance, if anybody who do not meet the entry requirement in terms of ILTS, then you know they actually uh, we actually give them uh, give them a, uh, a an English program and e, you know EAP English academic program which is for ten weeks. So when you have three offers, that is an English EAP of ten years, ten weeks, and then you have PQP program for a semester, and then you have masters. So this actually means three three offer letters. So now when you have three offers, uh, uh, three offer letters, then that becomes a little risky. But what we've seen is uh, students with two of, you know, students with an offer letter that has a P2P and that has masters, they do not have any problems with their visas in terms of visas. Yeah, actually in the past, uh, we have recruited some students with uh, like, uh, with the pathway P2P. And mm -hmm. students are very, very much happy. Like it's, it's a very short course, and the tuition fee is very reasonable too. I think it's just eight thousand total, uh, and the possibilities through this PQP course is very wide. Like students could could go to like different 
I like business courses. I, I believe this is mostly focused on business. Uh, so like, yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it does have business and it does have a cyber security as well. Yeah. So yeah, anybody with an IT background or any, for instance, anybody with a degree such as social work. Yes, we definitely do not have masters in social work in the university, but most of the university, most of the students now who are, who are, who are graduating, uh, they're actually a social work students. So what we have for them is, you know, they could probably come and study project management. Yeah. Some, in that is somehow they could relate this program to, in, yeah. to project management, yes. Project management is a very, very popular course at issue. We have like recruited many students. They are very happy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think, I think in terms of uh, like, uh, could you please add like uh, the viewers of students sometimes get confused, like when they are going to, um, going for like PQP or any other like pathway program to each year, each year. Uh, they get confused that they have they have to go to another college. So like, could you please explain like, this is oh, yeah, sure. issue, right? Yeah, so like, you know, it goes by the name ECC and ECU. So EC, EC stands for <laughs> and you know, it's just the change in the, the last, uh, last letter, which is C and U. So, you know, Edith Cohen College is Edith Cohen University's, uh, you know, is owned by Edith Cohen University and it's owned by Navitas. So it's a, it's own, uh, it's a 50, 50, 50% ownership of Navitas and, uh, and ECU. So this actually means that it's our own, it's our own college and we work very closely with ECC, Edith Cohen College. So if you have seen us in any, you know, any seminars or any any um, any any events that you might have attended, we always sit together. We always sit together and we always work. Uh, you know, we we always work together. So now, when you go to ECC, it does not mean that uh, you, you know you are you're going to a different college. No, you're going to the same. You're going to you're going to the you become a part of university from day one. Even if you're with ECC, you have all in the university and you know you 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 become you you become a part of the university from day one mm -hmm. it is that you know we you know we don't even say that you're a college student and you know they are they are university students but because you know what happens is like I, like i mentioned the only reason why we why we want you to go to ecc is firstly it's because you probably you have you know your scores are a little less but now that your scores are less, we do not say that you you are not a good student. You're still a good student to us. But what we want is we we want to nurture you. Probably we want to put you in a put you in Edith, Edith Cohen College for the reason that it's you know because the classes there is very very small. The class size is small, and you have the personal attention of all the lecturers there. So it's it's we only trying to go you know grow you up in a manner. So we're trying to develop your skills your learning skills, you know, so that when you come to university, because when you go to the university, the classes are huge. You know, in, in your college, you probably have 20, 25 or maximum 30 students in one class. Whereas in the university, it's it's a massive, you know, it's a massive, um, uh, uh, you, you get a lot of people there, there are a lot of students in one classes and you get, you you go unnoticed. So the only reason why we put you, why we want you to study in Edith Cohen College is because uh, you know so that you you we can improve on your learning skills and we could we could make you more confident. So if you have any questions, you can just come up. You could just come and you could just ask, which probably you would you know you you might you may hesitate when you go to the university and when you see so many students, you may not feel confident to ask questions. Yeah. So okay, Sanjay, like, we have a question from our one of our viewer, and what uh, he's asking is, uh, could you? Uh, uh, say something about the internship programs during or after the master's uh, uh, after the master of nursing course. <clears throat> so a master's of nursing, you know, it's a like I said, we have uh, a master's of nurse, nursing. It has to be practical because it can never be it can never be theoretical. So uh, you probably would have to spend a lot of time in the in the hospitals that we have a partnership with, then going to university. So probably a semester, first semester, you might spend some time in the university doing your, you know, doing few of the, um, starting few of the program, few of the units, but 
from semester from second semester onwards you have you would have to spend most of the time doing your practical units so now a very good thing about nursing is so the nursing uh, you know the nursing school that we have we have a separate building for nursing school so when then now that nursing school actually can be converted into a hospital if there's any natural calamity for instance that can be converted into a hospital so we have all this state of art technology you have you know you have everything that is uh, in that in hospital would have in that building and so that's where you start doing your practical units but at the same time you're not only limited to that building but we also have a lot of uh, you know a lot of hospitals a lot of uh, aged care facilities that we have a partnership with you'll have to do most of your practical units and you know do in in these uh, centers so internship with other programs is very less i mean you know it's is is minimum of 4 weeks but with nursing no it it can never we can you know you'll probably have to spend quite a lot of time doing your uh, practical units uh, uh because like would you take on some uh, some of the questions that's uh, in by the viewers i think like you are more uh... yeah actually some of our viewers are keen to know about the scholarships available in issue so could, could we actually jump into that Sure. So yeah, right now uh, for 2020, the scholarship is for undergraduate program. We have kept it at 20% each year. So there's a flat, you know, there's a 20% scholarship every year that you get in any bachelor's program that you wish to study. And the master's level, we have 20%. It's only for the first. It's only in the first year. now the reason why we you know uh, why we do that is because uh, it's not that we uh, ec is not a very expensive university our prices are our tuition fees are very very competitive so and so yeah that's uh, and that's one and especially when you the, when you come and study with us uh, at the masters level so there's a scholarship that we give which is only 20% in the first year mm-hmm. Okay. so any special requirements or criteria for this scholarship anybody who meets our entry requirement they are guaranteed uh, to get uh, you know scholarships okay that's very good to hear uh, so anything to add up rasa yeah uh, i see uh, another of uh, one of our viewers like has a query with uh, the off letter sanjeev uh, uh-huh. what asking is that you know uh, the process about getting the offer like you know uh, can you please explain on showing financial documents before getting an offer letter so this is what uh, she has a query okay no uh, uh, so what happens is uh, uh, the finance showing your financials is not important no when okay. i so I, i i mean because we understand that you cannot or uh, you do not get bank loans before you have the offer in hand in your hand or so what we mean by showing your financial document is by show, is we what is is you have to show your supporting documents so for instance you have you know because these documents are something that you will have it handy so any a relationship relationship proof probably or probably the proof of income in the form of your father's business details or probably the salary details this, this is what we want. okay Now, now as of now what we've done is uh, there's also a student financial declaration form which is the part of the uh, part of the application so if that is filled by the student then then that can also be taken into consideration so if you guys do not have it i'll have that forwarded to you guys so you could you, you could ask each of each applicant to fill in those application fill in that form and attach it along with the application and you could have it uploaded okay So I guess that answers the query, and I guess that's not a big deal to show that much document. Looks like just um, about mentioning mentioning them. Yeah. Uh, it's not an issue at all. I, that that's what I believe. That's what I think. Okay. Now, that's um, right. We don't want finance. I mean, we don't want your bank details or you know the loans in it because that's practically not possible. Yeah. Unless until and unless you have an offer in hand. So our first priority is to give you an offer first. Then when when we ask for your bank details, then that makes sense. Yep. Uh now let's go back uh, to the you know not back but like I want to uh come into the topic that is the about the virus or the covid-19 situation 
like I have attended one of your uh, webinars and where you've announced that you know ECU is giving or launching two million support package for the students. Like you know, can you uh, briefly cover in that aspect as to what exactly uh, ECU is doing in terms of the difficult students for the international students, basically, Sanjeev? Sure. So uh, we've been doing quite. You know, I think we were we were among the first university, not the first, but we were among the first few universities who came up with the, you know, the COVID-19 situation. And then and we decided to do something for uh, the students as well. Because ECU is a very strong community-based university. We have a lot of uh, students, you know, studying with us from, so, you know, from more than, uh, from more than 132 countries. So it's very important that we, we need to have a very strong community base and it's very important that we give something student in return in, you know, in situation like this. Mm -hmm. So what we've done is, you know, we have, uh, you know, we have given an access to ECU, I mean, to, to, uh, to any of the students with a grant of up to $2,000. So this is for students who have been significantly disadvantaged by COVID-19 and funds of up to $2,000 per student will be made available dependent on eligibility. So what they have to do is when I say eligibility that of course we look into their financial conditions as well. So they would have to come and uh, come and apply with us. So which they could do it online or, you know, just get in touch with our, um, with our, with our uh, online services, the student counseling services or the student, then they, they'll get the answers to all their questions. So that's one. We also have hardship payment scheme, which is any students who are suffering financial difficulty in order to pay the tuition fee probably for this coming, for the next semester. We have extended their, uh, their due date to pay their tuition fee, which was 1st of May. Now they, there could be further extension, you know, then that can be negotiated on case to case basis. So we also have ECU grocery grant that is given to all, this is, Actually, for international students, where we, we we give them a fifty dollar grocery, you know, e vouchers, and it's only for the uh, international students. And we do not have parking fees anymore. So there's an IT assistance as well. The student gets an extra laptop or data packs if they want. So that will be sourced by by us if they want any. And for any other services, if they are, you know, if they like, I, like I mentioned, they have to get in touch with us. They have to get in touch with the student counseling services and health services, you know, if they, are, if they are isolated, if they're feeling isolated or if they are distressed, then these are the best counseling. I mean, you know, the, they can reach out to students counseling services and students health services. Yeah, that's great, isn't it? And then on top, like, uh, uh, there's like Snerdy Perth as well, like who's doing some uh, something for the students as well, isn't it, Sanjeev? Yeah, yeah. There's the Study Perth, or Study Perth as well, which is uh, a separate. Uh, you know, apart from the university, they also have something in offering for all the international students. Uh, Sanjeev, like I, uh, you know, while going through your webinar, I came across a very fantastic tagline that you have come up with, and the issue message that is, it says, "Don't give up on your dreams," isn't it? And that's wonderful. Like you know. Given this time period, like where you never know, especially for the students, like what you're going to do next. And then, you know, like, oh, I'm losing my year. I'm losing my time. Something like that. And the students are feeling on that way. And can't yeah, up. Absolutely. You know, I, what I think is, you know, uh, because there's a, there's a very old saying which says, an idle, idle brain is the devil's workshop. Yeah. So, you know, especially the, you know the, in a situation like this, wherein we all are limited to our houses, you know, we can't go out. But that is not that you know you we just sleep and watch tv um, i mean you know but i think we need to keep ourselves occupied you know do your daily exercises i mean you know even if it's for 30 minutes even if you have to do it inside your house inside your home you have to do it and keep yourself occupied do something you know uh, i mean you know apart from watching tv which you could always do but do something that uh, you know probably keeps you occupied that keeps your your brain working so to say so yeah. as long as your brain's working, you know, and you don't keep it idle. So I think that's the best thing to do. So, but once it is idle, then, you know, you have thoughts coming, coming out, you know, you come, you, your thoughts would come across and then you think of the side. And, you know, what happens is when the situation gets uh, normal, then 
you will dwell on those thoughts and you will do multiple things and you will become masters of none, master of none so it's you know it's i think the time that you have now is very important that you decide on what you have to do what you want to do what you you know what you should be doing and probably uh, prioritize that and focus on that so i think that's the best thing one could do yeah true and what, uh, what i'm trying to hint at is like you know uh, just to keep the uh, you know students occupied or something like that you've also uh, introduced the online courses isn't it sanjeev absolutely yes yeah we you know we have online courses available so any students who have applied uh, to ecu and have offers or probably some of them some of you might have visas already so yeah. uh, we would not want you to you know uh defer it even if you want to defer it but i would rather suggest that you should continue studying online so you you could cover you could cover two units you know as of now as in uh, we don't know what would have you know because we still have uh we still have some time to go for the session to begin so as of now we would still want you to you know probably offer it offer the online uh, online studies and and uh, if things you know if things uh, improve uh, then you could probably you know you could probably go and study at in perth in the university itself but i mean because you know this is the now this is also this situation wherein you know uh, because the next session that we have the next uh, intake that we have after july is february so that february 2021 which actually means that you know uh, by the time if you miss out on this intake and if you're not doing anything this actually would increase the gap so which you know has which we have struggled over the past you know over the you know with almost all the students for so many for decades and decades wherein the high commission would ask you to explain gaps so yes. any students who, any students who is, you know who are recently passed out have, have cleared their exams or who have cleared their the last qualification they don't have to worry but students who have graduated some time back and do not take this period as a you know that you could you know that is an as an explanation in your uh, in your statement of purpose because that's you know that might not help so that cannot be an excuse so any students who have, who have done their graduation or who have done who have completed their studies long back and have applied recently to us make sure that you you know that you start uh, to start studying online because this could actually be an added point when you apply for your visa later because once you become an existing student of ecu and when you you've mentioned that in your statement of purpose that you're already doing uh, you you've already started studying in ecu <clears throat> this should be an added point in your sop and for your visa as well that's exactly what i have in mind as well for the mm -hmm. you know especially from the professional side what we've always what we've always been saying to the students is like don't keep yourself idle be occupied do something right and then this is like you never know this can be a blessing in disguise as well in fact like for many of our many of my friends this has been a blessing in disguise they've been like, that, you know, doing yeah. doing the you know the long left out works that they've already done that and let's hope that sanjeev this pandemic this, this thing gets over very soon and the students can actually travel to australia to perth to either uh, call uh, to university for the further studies now i think like sanjeev you left out a crucial factor uh the crucial uh, information to our viewers that is the accommodation policy that you have yeah yeah so as of now the accommodation scholarship uh, there are two sort of accommodation scholarship one is uh one is for the period of 22 weeks and one is for the full duration so any okay. students who we have an accommodation available in mount lolly campus which is the mount lolly campus is uh, is close to the city which is around 15 to 20 minutes from the city and uh, so here this accommodation scholarship stands that we give you a 30% scholarship for 22 weeks but if you choose to stay with us for the entire course duration then we give you 50% scholarship now we have another campus which is in southwest which is burnbury campus so the accommodation uh you can get free accommodation for one whole year one complete year but with south uh, southwest camp uh, southwest uh, campus we've got very limited courses so you'll have to get in touch with professional education and they will tell you more about the courses available in west burnbury campus and similarly you could apply 
definitely, Sanjeev. Like, you know, it will be a pleasure, like, uh, giving out or relaying the disability, the information that you have to, to our students uh, in the days to come or in uh, the coming days. And uh, uh, this is definitely from one of our uh, team members and where they would <laughs> want us to speak about the relationship that ECU yeah. and PEC shares. PEC shares. I think we, we, uh, we, I've known professional education for quite some time and you've been a part of uh, ECU for quite, you know, for a considerable period of time. And, you know, like I always say, you know, in, in, every time you made me talk about professional, you I always say that you go by your, you know, your, the name of your uh, agency, which is professional, because all of you guys are very, very professional. And, uh, you know, you, uh, and it's a strong team. I, I, have no, I, I know each one of you there and I know how hard you work. And yeah, it's always a pleasure to be, you know, to be associated with professional education. And yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm sure this relationship is going to get even more stronger, you know, by the time, by the year, you know, year passes, it will, will be even more stronger. And yeah, looking to recruit more students from you, from you guys. And it's a pleasure to have you guys around and to be a part of uh, your team. Yeah, definitely. From our side as well, Sanjeev, as far as I know, like I think it's been uh, almost like more than uh, 13, 14 years that we've been working with Edicon University. And then we've kind of like recruited quite a good number of students for Edicon University as well. And no doubt uh, about it, I'm sure. Like, since that long, like we've never had any issues as such with any of our students studying at Edicon University. And then I would not say 100% of them have all completed or graduated from Edicon, but like, you know, I would say like more than 90% of whoever students that we have recruited, they have kind of like gone on, uh, you know, progressed with their studies, completed their studies from Edicon University and gone on to their careers. That's very wonderful. And for me, That's personally- right. Yes. Yeah, so our retention, retention in terms of the students that you've sent is pretty high. So we had this doubt that any of your students would leave. Some of they do with their, for, you know, for their own reasons. So which, you know, which happens with almost all the universities, and you know, pretty not concerned about it. But we definitely, definitely look at what the retention ratio is, and you know, we never had any, we never had any complaints, or I, and I'm sure we'll never have any complaints in future as well. And what one thing like, I would like to share with the viewers is Sanjeev. I've been like working, uh, we've been working rather, I should say, working with Sanjeev for a pretty long time now, and he is kind of a person who has a magic wand in his hand and whatever he touches like it's turned into gold and so Sanjeev and that's the kind of work that you do and that's really wonderful to be having your uh, this thing and then the information that you have and then the kind of a, ded uh, a dedication that you have towards your work towards your this thing is like really fantastic and then I really uh, admire you Sanjeev in terms of the works or the dedication that you uh, show uh, in your work Sanjeev that's something that we all in fact like you know at our uh, at the end of the office, we talk about you. That's Thank amazing. you so much, Raju. Thank you so much, everybody. But I think, you know, this yeah. is possible yes. unless I have guys like you. I mean, so okay. because, yeah, we get along really well. And that's yeah. the reason why it shows in my work as well. Yes, yeah. there's been a few ups and downs, you know, where the office would things happen, these things happen. But it does not mean that it, have, you know, it affects our relationship. But because we know how strong we stand. So, yeah. And Sanjeev, like, uh, you know, uh, Purnima, uh, one of our team members, what wants us to uh, ask you is that, you know, mm -hmm. any message that you'd like to give out to the Nepalese students and the parents at these difficult times and something that you personally or on behalf of the university that you wish to, uh, you know, relay to our students, to the viewers? Uh, personally, I would want everybody to be safe and it's a difficult time. But from the university's perspective, I think COVID-19 has produced us you know, all the all, all of us a challenge of isolation, but it does not mean that you know we should be we should feel alone or you know we feel alone. I think we need to be united in facing the current challenge, and uh, we want our international students to feel connected and supported at this time. You could uh, you know, like I said, uh, any existing student, any students who is who, who are in Perth, they could reach out to our community services, ECU community services uh, support. Because like I mentioned, it, we are a very strong community-based university and uh, everyone is a vital part of it. And I think without them, we, 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 we can't even call ourselves a university without any students. So yes, it's very important that 
they if they are feeling isolated or distressed they should reach out to a community ecu community services and student counseling services so yeah and we all are together in this and you know because and when it when you know when this ends it's end, it ends for everybody so yeah there's like it won't continue forever it's going to be like you know i'm sure of- yeah because things have to should has to get normal and you know we have to meet we all have to meet <laughs> so we yeah, can't just yeah. be limited within our homes and within this uh, uh, you know zoom session or facebook session we need to see each other personally otherwise that touch would gone i mean you know the personal touch we can't have that over the uh, over these and, computers and uh, phones yeah and we just, we just don't want to be like stuck at home and grow, grow beards like this no way absolutely no way okay yeah. sanjeev like one of our viewers uh, has a question and what he's asking is that you know any popular nepalese uh, uh, alumni of edicon university that you are aware of uh, sanjeev i think there's one i would not like to name him but he, oh, okay yeah, you don't name him. definitely not name him because he works in pretty good position in one of the bank so yeah he's an uh, he's a he's a he's an ecu alumni and there are a lot of alumni in the whole in you know in whole of nepal so yeah there's an uh, i think there's a page in facebook if you look into which is ecu ecu alumni in nepal i think you'll uh, it's either on facebook or somewhere i've seen but yes you would find a lot of and i think it's in linkedin as well if you okay if you could just uh, you know you'll see a lot of uh, alumni is there and and i think the you know the real feedback anybody who can get is to speak to these alumni and they'll tell you more about they'll tell you how good we are in you know in delivering us in any studies in any discipline so they'll be they'll be the best person to tell you yes. i think like raju sir uh, yeah. the issue wapa wapa is also very much popular and has quite a few popular personalities like absolutely actors. yeah yes. that's right so yeah i mean anybody and because again uh, nepal we got a lot of uh, students who are interested in music but you know actually promoted that uh, you know the wapa school that that much like uh, like others but definitely this is something that i have in my mind and we we'll definitely do something probably in association with you guys to promote wapa as well yeah yeah and then Very few of the alumni said they've gone on to make big in the even the hollywood yeah. movies yeah absolutely yeah yeah i what well, i know like what bikis is hinting at but yeah that's fine and uh, <laughs> Sanjeev, like one thing that I just and uh, another thing that I want to like ask you is that you know now let's uh, during this lockdown period like you know you've also rightly mentioned about you know um, if you stay idle like the devil starts playing with your head and then playing with your minds and then mm-hmm. uh, any suggestions as to how students at this particular uh, situation should keep themselves active like any advices anything that can be Sanjeev? I mean uh, for me the real the real help is you know reading books. I mean. Oh, okay. It's not only uh, you know you don't only kill time, but no, Sanjeev, I would be out of the conversation because you are talking with Bikesh. He is also a bookworm. Ah, okay. okay. So you know, but at the same time, it does two things. It imparts, you know, it gives you a lot of knowledge as well. You know, and I think uh, knowledge is something that you would want to have uh, even if you grow older and older, because uh, that is something which you know, which uh, that has always inspired me, and you know, and I read uh, read quite a lot. So, yeah. so this is uh this is the best thing to do i reckon yeah i think yeah i i read a lot too and i think it's it's one of the best way to develop your skills and i think uh, students who are willing to study abroad or who are studying uh, in nepal as well can develop their skill by reading so like absolutely yeah Okay, and uh, I'm seeing some comments from my team members here, uh, Sanjeev, and they say like uh, Pratima, what she's saying is Sanjeev is a really nice person to work with. Thank you, Sanjeev. Thank you, Pratima. And I see like uh, Purnima and Dilasha as well. They are both saying like you know, it's very nice to have Sanjeev online with us. Good, a good personality to be working with. That's what they are saying. And so thank you, Amar. everybody. And Amar from Pokhara. I know also. everybody thinks good about me, so yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. Uh, because anything that you have uh, from your side, uh, like um, at last, could you please, uh, like I think we are coming uh, almost to the end of this. Uh, mm-hmm. At last, could you please mention something about Perth uh, and issue issue itself? 
sure. I mean, ECU, we've already said so many things. And ECU is well known. I mean, you know, any words, anything that I say probably wouldn't be less because a lot of people would know about ECU because we've made it quite popular. You guys have made it very popular. Yeah. So, yeah, so nothing to talk about ECU anymore. But yes, about Perth. Perth is uh, one of the most livable city in the world. So now, you know, now the new tagline that has been given regional, but that does not mean it's a, you know, Perth is a village or something, but no, Perth is regional, which is a good thing for all the international students. So you get to have one year additional PS post study work, which, you know, which you, which any, any city gets if they are tagged as regional. So that's a good thing about Perth being regional. But now, uh, at the same time, Perth is, uh, you know, Western Australia is one of the most, uh, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, Western Australia, is, uh, I would rather say, has the most number of, uh, you know, the employment opportunity, opportunity is really high. You yep. have more than 80% of the, uh, you know, industries that are listed in stock exchange based in Western Australia. So 80% of it is in Western Australia and rest of the 20% in the other parts of Australia. So now this actually means there's a lot of job opportunities. And now Western Australia does not depend on international students like many of the states does. You know, many of the states in Australia do. So uh, now, you know, the, the uh, Western Australia is known for a lot of, uh, for a lot of, people who like to travel because so hospitality is one of the biggest industry in uh, in western australia a lot of students they get you know they when they reason, when they come to when they come to perth they get into hospitality in this hospitality industry because that's where you get a lot of that there are a lot of job opportunities now at the same time western australia also pays uh, you know pays higher than any other states in australia so it pays 10% more so your average your minimum wage is around is close to twenty dollars per hour, and you know by the time you you know when you when you if you have experience it goes up to thirty or it goes even up to forty dollars an hour. So your living standard you know the living standards living standard is just as good as any other states, but at the same time your living cost is less. So you get the equal living style but at the lower cost. So. If you happen to find, you know, if you, if if, you, if anybody who lives in the city, living in cities, all you know, is always expensive. But either it's Australia or either it's you know, it's any part of the world. If you live in a major city, if you live in the main city, it's always expensive. But if you move outskirts, then you get a lot of uh, accommodation which could easily fit into your pocket. So, especially if you look around any of the, uh, you know, if you look around, if you look for accommodation around the campus near the near the university. Then it can even go down. It, it can even go below hundred dollars a week, so which I think is a very very good uh, you know cost or you know that that you could pay towards your rental towards your rental. And uh, you know a lot of students uh, they've got they don't complain about jobs anymore, which they used but not anymore. And okay. the thing about you know the uh, in the Western Australia is uh, you have state sponsorship. So if you have, if you're a good student, and if you happen, if you do well in your studies, so by the time by the time you complete your studies, uh, you know you may uh, be eligible for state sponsorship, which actually means uh, you know a, a guaranteed residency, because that's what everybody looks at in the end. You get guaranteed residency, uh, provided you meet the criteria such as a good school, good. You have to do well in the academics, find job within the same uh, within the same you know. Uh, uh, faculty that you have studied, so you have to find a job, and you you probably get the state sponsorship as well. You you know you could apply for no, you could apply uh, apply for state sponsorship, and you can nominate yourself. Now, uh, Sanjeev, like what I would yes. like to uh, message that I would like to relate to our viewers is that you know, as the tagline or the ECU message suggests, it's don't give up on your dreams. Uh, you people are accepting the applications and anybody like who's waiting out there waiting for this pandemic or this COVID-19 thing to get over and you are all the access at your homes, please do get in touch with any of us or do send us a message. We'd be happy to be sending those applications. I get the offer letters and all those uh, all those things. And you can also, if you wish to, you can also go, go ahead and do your online studies rather than wasting or doing nothing at home. So we can always do that. But that's something which I would like to give out to the viewers as well. Because from your side, anything that you'd like to send out a message? Uh, well, 
Sanjita, and you have pretty much covered most of the thing. Like Ralph mentioned, uh, even Sanjita, I would like to uh, like um, in my like most of the session, I mentioned that the same thing as you have mentioned that for the students not to stay idle and join for the online classes, don't waste time. Yeah, that's uh, that's the message from us actually. <laughs> yeah, I think this is what everybody would because you know like uh, you know if we are idle and if you're doing nothing then then we'll do nothing. So it's yeah, better. Uh, time yeah. is very uncertain and we don't know like how long this thing will last. So like absolutely not people are glued and to their phones and their... like we should say like how soon it will be over now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's our yeah. Policy. I'm sure it'll, it'll, it'll be over very soon, you know. We're not very far anymore now. And fingers crossed. So, yeah. All right. So. All right uh, thank you, Sanjeev. And anything thank before... You so much, uh, the chat is almost over now. Anything, Sanjeev, that you would like to say? Uh, any final words? Any last uh, this thing? Uh, nothing. I mean, uh, yeah, we'll definitely catch up once this is over. Because the first thing that I'm going to do is to travel to Nepal once. This uh, uh, <laughs> the situation gets better, so yeah, very keen to you know meet you guys again, and yeah, so you, yeah. see you soon when this gets over. Yeah, we do look forward to have to uh, to to, have, to be having you in our office, uh, Sanjeev, very soon. That is, and do yeah. stay safe and uh, you too. Everybody yeah. stay safe and be good. Yeah, uh, read a lot. That's the best thing you do. Yeah, and yeah. Thank you so much, professional. Thank, Thank you. you so much, everybody. Thank, Thank you, Krishna, for arranging it. Uh, Purnima, Pratima, Vikesh, any name that I missed, uh, please don't uh, feel bad. I remember you all. Yeah, thanks so, so much for everything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, uh, Raju. Thank you so much.